What's going on, Workforce? Brian and Chris here. And today we're talking about New World. But before we dive into that subject, Chris, you just got your E11S clear. Uh, some epic stuff happened to you last night in 14. Why don't you touch on that a little bit, and then we'll talk about our impressions of New World. Yeah, so me and Dave Greco, we're both going to learn E11S and had a group of six overgeared and knowledgeable strangers willing to deal with us learning tank mechanics. Uh, I appreciate Dave making me up my game with some really clean transitions. Uh, there were certain transitions that he seemed to learn a lot faster than me. Uh, so I felt I really had to kind of kind of keep up. Um, you know, it's posted to to, uh, to you know, the the Abacus website if you want to go see what a gray parse looks like. But uh, <laughs> I we did get our clear and it was it was really fun to get to learn. Uh, got a long way to go as far as like feeling comfortable with uptime. There were some times in there where like. Todd was talking about like, hey, here's how you maximize uptime. And I was like, yeah, right now we're still going with like, uh, we're going to screw the powder mark tank swap here. And one of us is going to lay dead on the ground kind of strategy. <laughs> so, you know, your maximal like extra global cooldown of uptime might be a little beyond Dave and I's comfort level at this point. Uh, but, but we did get our clear and I got my first piece of, I actually won my first roll of Savage Loot from, from Eden 9 through 12. So I got, I got gloves. So I've got 530 gloves now, which feels good. I will say I'm starting to understand a little more why in current tiers there's augmented Crypt Lurker in some slots and Savage in others because, um, I, I was way high on skill speed. And so I literally was having trouble stripping enough skill speed off my set because the gloves added so much skill speed compared to my augmented Exarchic. And I don't have best in slot pants. I have the augmented Crippler pants, which have skill speed on them and mm -hmm. pants are a heavy stat slot. And so like I learned a little more about why gearing works the way it does and that two 530s are definitely not created equal. Um, I'm not playing at a level where I'm going to act on that knowledge, but I appreciate <laughs> understanding it. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, some more stuff might be coming. It looks like uh, there's also rumors of more minimum eye level clears. Do you want to touch yeah, on that or fun. should we just tease that? I, I would I would love to be invited to collaborate with more stuff. Getting to do that with people is a lot of fun. And watching collaborative content is one of my favorite things when I get a chance to sit on Twitch. And so, of course, being invited to play with people that I already watch would be a blast anytime that's possible. All right. So now we're going to kind of shift focus, obviously, to talk about New World. The beta has been out uh, this week. It continues to run to August the 2nd, and then the official game launches on August 31st. I messaged you like 30 times via text. I said, dude, you got to come uh, play this game. I'm really curious as your thoughts. Typically and traditionally, you don't play early access or betas. Uh, especially because there's a character wipe here. There's no, yeah, like I could go, it. right. I could go grind to, to the cap and then that just all resets. And I'm not going to do that personally speaking, but I've been covering this game for a year and I've had a lot of people have asked me my thoughts about it, but I'll, I'll, sh I'll save those for a little bit, make this more discussion based. Uh, Chris, somebody asked me last night, like, how's Chris like a new world? And I go, Chris is like a new world. Like he likes anything that's new to him. He hates it. <laughs> like, because you typically like, but when you compare like your initial experience to that at Guild Wars, there was definitely some pro takeaways. Do you want to talk about like what you thought was really good, what you what you're struggling with? Yeah. So the reason I don't typically touch betas for anybody that's been on the fence about this game is that like every piece of experience that I put into Final Fantasy right now, right? I'm, I'm starting to level my melee jobs for the first time. They're all at level 30 now. I'm um, being told that they get way better as I get up to level 50 and 60. That's true. And so that's like true. getting getting that stuff up, those are permanent unlocks. And so in Final Fantasy, everything's so permanent for a vertical progression game. In Guild Wars, everything's literally permanent. And so to go into a beta where they're telling me there's going to be bugs, they're telling me that things are going to change, and that they're telling me they're going to delete. And those are promises. Um, that's a hard value proposition. You're putting a bad taste in my mouth, and I'd rather just wait till they say the game is complete, which on release date, we know MMOs traditionally have bad launches, but in theory, they're ready as of that day. And so that's the earliest I'm typically willing to go in. But you did blow up my phone. Uh, and, I and I was Thank like, you. well... If it's that good, Brian, like the problem is like, how would I even get a key? And you're like, I already have your key. <laughs> I get your and key I was right like, here. And I was like, yeah, but like, how long would it even take to download? Not long. Like, like, like 10 minutes. And I was like, all right, like I'm running out of excuses not to try this. Yeah. Um, yeah and yeah. so I will say that one of the things I like about Final Fantasy at this point is that they've done an incredible job of listening to all of the complaints about the game from an accessibility standpoint, from a user base standpoint. And so while the UI cannot do everything that a, a large scaling add-on community from WoW can offer, 
um, and never will be able to. That's the advantage of the add-on API. The 14 team does an incredible job making the game able to be a user experience that's mm -hmm. really pleasant. Exactly. So when I go into new games, uh, such as New Genesis recently or Guild Wars relatively recently, back in, I think, April or May uh, is when I started, um, settings such as not being able to set my resolution or my window size easily, set what display because I have multiple monitors easily, um, just have control over audio, especially prior to games so that if I'm live, I can make sure that I have my audio the way I want it, uh, especially because I have friends who play with like Bluetooth headphones. And so they're telling me like, I missed the audio in the opening cinematic because it defaulted to my system speakers. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, like my spouse was watching TV and so I had those muted and I can't ship it to my Bluetooth speakers until after the opening cinematic. So right. like, there's just some like basic things where it looks like, like in, in new Genesis, what my thing was is I assumed it, what it feels like, right. If feeling is reality, what it feels like they did is that the game devs spent a lot of time testing and playing their game, the way they play games mm -hmm. and then stopped. Like they just didn't ask anybody different than them. And so when I, and when I went into gold wars, it felt like, okay, there's aspects of this game that are old and are limiting them. And I can feel those. There are aspects of the way it's optimized for my machine. And that is confirmed by the announcements around end of dragon saying, Hey, we're going to start adding support for DX 11 and all that. So we're, we're moving in a direction where the game is going to run better with new world, new engine, unlimited budget, access to like a huge portion of the backbone of the internet as far as servers go. 100%, so yeah. uh, as far as new IP goes, this should be the highest chance at a smooth launch. And I boot up the game and there's like a system settings button right there on the main menu. Mm -hmm. And it has like a master volume slider and accessibility settings in the beta. And like, like there was all of these things that my bar for the game was like, New IP from a studio mm, that has yeah. struggled out of the gate. Yeah. Like, all you need to do is not give me a reason to not play your game. Like, you don't need to be good. You just need to not be bad. Right. Um, and, and out of the gate, like, do I wish character creator was more diverse? Yes. Do I wish there was, you know, I wasn't having these weird, like, <laughs> falling yeah. up stuff. Yeah, if you yes, guys have absolutely. not seen it, it's hilarious. Uh, we should definitely, if somebody has not clipped that, and if he does, like, we need to go back into the archive and clip it because it's a little bug where all of a sudden your character's like feels like they're walking on hot coals or something like that in certain areas i haven't run into that but watching that happen to you makes me lose it i just crack up laughing anyway continue. the worst part is you can't interact with a quest giver or mm -hmm. i would just ignore it i right. would just uh, all across the like you look like uh, somebody's like puppeting you yeah exactly 100 percent. Uh, yeah so you know if you've ever watched like team america world police like that's the level of walking that's happening here uh and so like there's aspects of the game that I am under underwhelmed with the melee, like the reaction time on blocking and stuff just feels like, but then I picked up a musket and I was like, Oh, well, that's really fun. Yeah. Uh, so th there's definitely something there as new IP. The right direction is not to reinvent the wheel. And I will tell you, they did not reinvent the wheel. Like the crafting system, the gathering system, the combat system, uh, the inventory system, the the way you quest all of these things i can name more than one game that has done it virtually identically to them it might be a unique combination of elements mm -hmm. but there is so far being like level 12 i haven't run into any of the things that make them unique now hanging out in people like jebro's stream hanging out in Sphia playing it watching you play it as people get into things like dungeons and bosses mm -hmm. and pvp i think that's where they put their innovation and i, I didn't make it that far yeah well, and the goal is not to obviously make it that far. Like, I, I don't have a goal of hitting level cap now because, like, I'm honestly just so really enjoying my... Again. Yeah, so I can do it again. Yeah, let's let's keep doing this thing. Um, But what, what's interesting, I see a lot of people making comparisons and I like I can't read the tone all the time because it's like, oh, it's they have a system like this in ESO. It's like, are you saying that's a bad thing or a good thing? Because at the <laughs> end of the day, like, it's what I find the strength in it is that it's familiar, but yet at the same time, it's... I honestly would say polished where you look at like the crafting, the gathering and the, that whole system in place. And that as I go about and the, how massive the world is with no loading screens and how like just adventuring out into the world, whether I'm flagged for PVP or not. And so a lot of people, you know, like, especially within our community generally don't like PVP and you can play this game hundred percent PVE focus. Like there's no forced PVP, but if you want to have PVP and you want to have that experience, that also exists. And it's some of the most exhilarating content 
both for me to watch. I was hanging out in Jebro's stream as well. Like, and he was just running around him and his friends. And it's like that in and of itself is really exciting. I, I am just blown away by just how the game both like visually and audibly suck me in. Like, it's like when you talk about, like, I see a lot of comparisons to ESO. I see a lot of comparisons to Guild Wars. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about Final Fantasy when it, when comparing it to this game. And no. I think audibly, when you look at the sound design, like they are, like I, I would still say Soken takes it. Like I'm not sitting here saying like they've crushed it. But like when you talk about these levels, like I don't get that same level outside of Final Fantasy and New World in the other game MMOs that I've played. And I've played them, but I'm not going to sit here and exclaim that I'm an expert in all these games. I just think that like the atmosphere of new world like they it just is really well paired together the how the zones are built and it is set in this kind of semi-reality and for me it does take me back to my childhood because i grew up in east texas like seeing the forests and the plains and these it, like we didn't have hills because this is texas but we like at the end of the day we at least had all these there's, these hill, country. there's hill country but it, i didn't grow up in hill country um and so i i just find that the the game is extremely well polished and I think that's a really good start for an introduction. I think there'll be people who struggle. I think people who've grown up with the pure theme, bo you know, theme park model are going to struggle because at some point that model will end in this game. At some point that the quest line is going to expire and you're like, okay, I've, I've done this story and I've done these things and I've learned about this world. What do I do next? And that's where the sandbox of the game, I've been playing this game like as a sandbox. Like I'm like, I've done a couple of handful of the quests, but then I just find myself running around picking up faction stuff and gathering. Like, honestly, I'm like, I have a goal of trying to, I want to chop down a mature tree. I'm getting so close to having that happen. And it's him and he's like, this is the best lumber, <laughs> lumberjack simulator. I go, I'm having a good time in the game, just kind of running around and, and just like, you know, strip clearing these forests. Um, I, you know, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think when you talk about new IP, right. Yeah. And, and Final Fantasy, 17 is going to have it if whatever it is people talk about 14 possibly you know what if we did a new engine what if we did a new launch one of the reasons that you do something like 6.1 where you restart the story but you don't uh restart mm -hmm. the whole game is that starting a new ip is hard and so mm -hmm. like quantity of content is gonna yeah, be agreed. just quantity just raw quantity before you even talk about quality so there is something nice about them saying we're not going to spend much time inventing the wheel let's spend time on executing quantity of a known thing um and i think for people to have it feel new it's going to be a question of how many people have played those other games. So like, as far as I know, you've never really spent a ton of time in Eve online or elite dangerous. Correct. And so this questing hub style is not going to be something you've dumped hundreds of hours into right. this idea of leveling up a hub is relatively new to you. And so you're like, Oh my gosh, I could like level this city. I have an objective. I have a sandbox style objective that I am going to seek out. There's an achievement to measure it. I'm going to chase this down. And that feels very new to you mm -hmm. as opposed to somebody who's coming over maybe from Elite Dangerous. Yeah. Like, I just spent 600 hours grinding this. I don't want to spend another 600. And there isn't that many other options because the game is new. There's not there's not Guild Wars jump puzzles. There's not. Right. right. And so there's. Like, depending on what other games you play, there's a lot of comparisons to ESO here. That makes sense. There's a lot of, com it feels when you're going through, when you talk about sound design, world design, and polish, mm -hmm. it actually feels like the scope of what traditionally would be a single player game, which is really impressive for what will ultimately be a live service MMO game. Usually we, we see things like Assassin's Creed, God of War, we see them take on a level of polish that something that's more ongoing can't. Yeah. Uh, and so it is very impressive to see what happens when you talk about new MMOs that are well funded. Uh, what would happen if you had the money of Square Enix or WoW, but we're building starting today? Mm -hmm. The only way to do that is to have the backing of somebody like Amazon. So it's incredible to be reminded of, of we, we always talk about like the passion and the drive and the focus, but like at some point, it's it's impressive to see like what does it look like when it's not two guys in the back of a truck like what is what does it look like when there's not not millions of dollars but but real big money like big checks behind this where you can start to make promises of like here's our five and ten year roadmap and you have enough money in the in the war chest that it's not like you know anthem ran through the motions but ultimately didn't last this yeah is something like they could run this at a loss if they wanted to. Like this is the company that has brute forced whole industries. And so from a gamer's perspective, one of the problems with investing in MMOs yeah. is that you're afraid of investing in something that's going to go away. And if Amazon says they're going to stick with it and they have the ability to do it, 
It's a question of will they, and, they only, and only time will tell. Them. But I think there's a lot of there's a lot of, of good things that, it, in my mind, it's a good use of their money uh, to back a game until it succeeds, to fake it till you make it. Uh, I think that's really good, and that'll allow the game to mature and grow. And the fact that they're not ready to say here is they have a roadmap, but the fact that they're not saying this is exactly how it's going to be monetized, right. this is exactly the patch schedule. No, no, like this I've is seen people call for that, and I'm like, honestly, no, 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 don't you know? Like they're they. I think a part of that is that developing both a pattern and a surprise, right? Because you and I talked about it. You were like, oh, what have like, what's their plan? I go, well, rumors are that like they might introduce a new weapon before launch. Maybe, maybe not. People were talking about the great sword being the like a next weapon to be added. But I was like, you know what would be really exciting is you don't put that in launch. You have a big update one month or month and a half after the game is released. And then it's like, oh, by the way, we've added a brand new weapon which completely changes up builds, which gets people excited. It's a whole nother thing for players who in a month and a half, because there's already players like coming up on level 50 after a week. So you're going to see players at cap, you know, within two weeks. So about a month and a half, like, hey, now there's a new weapon. You want to go skill up and see how it interacts with the world. How does this change your play style? How does this fit into the, how does this change any metas is established? No, oh, by the way, we're also making adjustments to the current sandbox, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So it's that, I think it's a, it's not just about how it launches, but it's about it delivering consistent updates. And one of the things that has me excited is that I think this is going to be a game for me that pairs great with Final Fantasy 14. People are like, how's the story? How's the story? I go, it's interesting. Characters are interesting. I'm not playing it for the story. I'm not like I'm Final Fantasy 14 is a story driven MMORPG. This is a sandbox with light with theme park elements. People keep debating whether it's the whether it is a sandbox or whether it is a theme park. And I'm just saying it's a sand park. Like it is a, it's a hybrid design philosophy where you have wars, you have invasions, you've got obviously like what your equivalent of fates is, you know, in, in Final Fantasy, like those real time events that are happening out in the world, you have crafting and gathering in a player driven economy, which has pros and cons, but ultimately it's just an interesting thing to see and to see a, an MMO with this much polish so far, like, yes, there's been bugs and stuff in the beta, but overall, my server as experience has been far stable, far more stable than I've seen any other games of service game launch, even Cyberpunk launch, uh, you know, in the in the last couple of years. And if they can knock it out of the park and have a smooth launch on August 31st, like it will end up setting a new bar to where somebody's like, oh, all games of service launch with issues. Well, actually, no, like Amazon said, here's the new bar. We're not launching with problems. Go for from there. I think one change I would make if I if I could, if I had. Like if I was over there at Amazon, I say, let me guest my character on another world while I wait in queue for mine. One of the things that is really frustrating is that like logging in at night, like if I, let's say I got off work and I was like, log in, it's like, okay, you got 500 people ahead of you. It's like, that could be an hour. That could be more than an hour await. And what would be really nice is like, I just want to play that. I don't want to make a new character and just go level up a new character. That progress doesn't carry with me that like, okay, that's fine that I have that character as my alt character. But especially when you're working towards progression, it's like, let me take that character, my main one, and keep me in queue, but let me just go play. You know, like I'd be in your house. Yeah. It's just right? like Imagine something. That was a justification for your house. Yeah. Because the houses are only, the house started at like 7,500 gold. That's a very doable number. Like I've been at six, 700, and I'm not really gaming for it. So it's, right. well, it, it's a now, very doable yeah. number. Right now, there's no real like value in money because it's all going to be like completely reset. What will be interesting to see is how the economy responds once the game officially launches and how like people value certain things, et cetera. So it's interesting. I think it's a good, I think for me, it's going to be a great game that I pair with 14 because somebody was like, are you like, somebody literally asked me like, are you quitting 14 for new world? It's like, no, like I have a, I have a unique position with final fantasy. I have got everything done. <laughs> you know, it's like everything that I want done. I'm making stretch goals because the game is fun, but it's, it's nice that I can pair because it was always 14 and destiny two for me. Like, that's like when you look at it, like I've always kind of been a two kind of grindy game guy and I did Destiny 2 for PvP and I did Final Fantasy for PvE. That's why when they took away like half the game, I was like, oh, I better go do all that PvE stuff that I never cared to do. I'll just go do that now. And so that's what I did. And then I just like, all right, and then I'm not playing Destiny right now. So it's like this is a perfect pairing to sit here and have two games, like even where New World becomes my PvP game in that regard. Yeah, I mean, the question will be how well do they listen and learn? Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that we've really Here's seen that. now is is the result of years of Yoshi P and his team making mistakes or slightly missing the mark or largely missing the mark and learning and growing. 
And so a lot of the reasons Shadowbringers is as good as it is, is not because Error, Heavensward, and Stormblood were flawless in every single measure, but because they did the best they could, and then they listened and learned. And so we've seen some systems change drastically. We've other seen other systems not change so much. We've seen some classes change drastically, yeah. other classes not so much. And so we've we've seen elements of Final Fantasy XIV where they've done a great job of saying, this needs to change, this does not. This needs to uh, change drastically. This needs a slight iterative move forward. And, and so that back and forth, that dialogue with the players where they're not committing to changes that are going to be done two years from now, five years mm -hmm. from now, they're listening and learning as they go, is a lot of what has made XIV so successful. That ability to communicate with us, mm -hmm. um, that's a big deal. Yeah. And, and so I think that would be something that uh, you know it's a question of can new world do that and that's not something that can be answered now right. there is no yes or yeah. no it's it's mm -hmm. the only thing that tells us this time we are getting there as fast as the universe gets us there yeah so as a final thought like at jesse chat asking talking about uh dova is can final fantasy 14's engine be upgraded that might be a good discussion topic like for a deep dive special video but yes and no what essentially the like the engine argument is, is yes the engine can be upgraded but when you talk about like legacy and decisions that were made a decade ago 15 years ago 20 years ago at some point there seems to be a nice way of saying like here's a brand new starting point uh and it connected into you know the games themselves like uh, you know well uh like we saw this a little bit with fantasy star and new genesis the battle system has changed right so like if yoshi p was like we really want to reinvent the battle system it then it's a design decision. Do we want to bring that and port that into all the existing content or do we want to preserve that? Because we also know there'll be gamers who will ask for that preservation, right? Just like there's the historical society in the world. So there's a there's a part where it's like Heaven's Word and ARR and even Stormblood to a degree right now aren't the way they were. And if you were, the only way you could experience that was to have to be there. Even though with New Game Plus, the battle systems have changed and all those things. At some point, like if you're making such a drastic shift, you know, like for players, let's say, let, let's say just for, you know, discussion that they want to make it an action RPG. I see that every time they've announced an expansion. Hey, are they making this more action RPG ish? Because that's what I'm looking for. Not me. I'm just saying what I've seen in the community in chat. And I think essentially if they were going to make that drastic of a decision, it makes sense to have a kind of a new starting point. You can say that your character is your character and there's a connection you know, to that, but this is a new thing with a new engine, et cetera. Could they do it? Yes. I don't know the, the volume of work that would be needed. And then even if they did such a drastic change, there would still be a demand for that preserve, that historical preservation of the game. The advantage of the age of 14 versus new world mm -hmm. is that right now there's a ton of people doing the golden saucer for the first time, right? It's not new content. Correct. The disadvantage of the age of 14 versus New World is that I did my level 50 scholar quest for the first time this week and mass at Suna or whatever it was called is no longer available as an action. And so you've designed a quest that was about cleansing people, a large group of people very rapidly, and you've removed the mass cleanse. I don't think there was ability. a mass cleanse. To somebody, somebody told me in the actions that there was the ability to kind of group at Suna or, or something with my fairy or so yes your fairy used to be able to do that okay and that's actually was the gap because you didn't get in Suna or like a cleanse until later in the scholar's life so your fairy was handling it like sub whatever and then you would actually have a scholar you'd have two cleanses so yeah yeah and and as in in a quest where the system is not strong enough back at ARR to um oh yeah and you could AOE party list. there's no party list so i'm having to manually click each of those people and i can't see their debuffs because they're not in my party list because they're npcs and npcs aren't in your party and so like there's there's elements about the game that has aged very poorly and there's elements about the game that have aged very gracefully golden saucer has aged very gracefully it's a it's a beautiful piece of content palace of the dead heaven on high aged very very gracefully various job quests msq roulette there are aspects of the game that are not what they were um, and they are something that players still go through because they're requirements or they choose to things like watching people go do Alexander for the first time, watching people um, go do Omega for the first time. These are, I, I believe, optional. I don't think any of those are required by MSQ at this point. I think Crystal right. Tower is, but I think all I think. The yeah. And, I'm, and they, then Crystal Tower separate. wasn't originally. It was just recommended. Yeah, it was added. And then they're like, guys, let's just make it like it's so important to the story. You should do it. <laughs> and, 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 so, and so I, I will say like. 
what New World brings up as a conversation with Final Fantasy is, you know, if you can't rebuild a new engine from scratch, what can you do? Can you can you right when you when you build a computer for the first time, you can do that. But you can also like, like I need to upgrade my RAM because when I built it, I was on a budget and I have an extra RAM slot. And so mm-hmm. I go to the store, I buy another RAM slot. I shut my computer off. I plug the RAM in. I boot it back up and I'm all set. And I can and that and now I have double the RAM. And so like that's a thing I can do by just applying money and a little bit of my time. So the question is, how far can they go metaphorically with RAM slots? Yeah. How far can they go metaphorically with going back with things, um, you know, and can they better plan for the future? Can they better plan for not only how a system is going to be implemented, but how it's going to age? So, for example, the trials are now being brought back as unreals. Mm -hmm. That's taking some amount of work to go back retroactively and make a fight that was never designed to be an unreal into an unreal. My question now, and it's something they would not tell us, but that could be going on in the back end, is during Shadowbringers, were those fights built to be future unreals now? Right. Were they doing the work now while they have the file open metaphorically while they while they're in the middle of working on it? Were they coding it in a way where they're saying, okay, not only this is how this can be implemented now, but but this is what this is going to look like in seven or Mm point oh when we bring back these fights and we've got Titania Unreal. Right. And and that and we won't know until we know because that's the ideal. Um, All of a sudden they'll be like, Hey, we can do three of these at once. And we're like, Wow, how'd you do that? And it's like, Oh, that's Shadowbringers trial fights coming yeah, back is unreal 100%. it makes sense because those are cheaper than bringing leviathan up to speed mm-hmm. and uh and so final thing uh carol silver uh saying the luminous engines already been upgraded for 16 and for spoken has not been applied to 14 and if you guys haven't seen those engine upgrades they're phenomenal honestly like when i'm playing new world i go man what would yoshi p do with this budget like what could yoshi p do with this technology i would love to see it I would love to see it. And at some point, it, it will make sense, right? At some point, you know, people will look at it and say, wow, 14, you know, like looks gorgeous. It looks gorgeous. But at some point when you're like stacking up against MMOs that launch in 2025 and Ashes and, you know, whatever, like you're like, okay, yeah, I've got establishment. But like at some point, Square Enix is wise enough to know that it's like, hey, let's, uh, here's what this plan is. Here's what this looks like. And who knows what we'll see with 11. 11's coming up on its 20th anniversary next year. I'm personally hoping that we see something really big and they said something big is coming, but we'll have to wait and see. We'll cover it here uh, for you guys as it, as, as that happens. So uh, Chris, why don't you take us out? Yeah. So uh, new world beta closes August 2nd and uh, the 31st, it'll be booting up uh, for everybody that's kind of in their waiting period until Endwalker. It's a great time to try other games, regardless of what those other games are. And that does not mean that we are going to be anywhere different on November 19th. <laughs> As we get closer to September with the media tour and everything, uh, it's an exciting time to see so many people getting into 14. Huge congrats to all the new players coming in and clearing things for the first time. Excited to have you here. Remember, the game is, for anybody at this point, discounted again. Mog Station stuff discounted again. All sorts of stuff is going on sale again as of at least this filming. So from Brian and Chris, go out there, get involved in 14. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.